Let's go. Oh, welcome to Christmas Island. How's the bunky rentals dip? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the smallest airport I've ever been to. I know, it was basically a tin shed. Oh my god, the amount of times I've nearly lost this. Hey going guys, come while while touring. This is a bit of a different one. Stick around, it'll be interesting I reckon. Alright, we're gonna go, your mum's... Right, we're gonna go. I'll tell you where we are and what we're doing in a minute. We've got um, my folks following us. Christmas Island is a tiny dot in the Indian Ocean. It's 1500 kilometres west of the Australian mainland and only 350 k south of Indonesia. However, it is still an Australian territory. It is not a slickly presented tourist destination. In fact, for many people, it may be the very opposite of their idea of a tropical holiday. There's no high-rise hotels or sumat bars or room service, no taxis, no nightlife, limited shops and restaurants, and no phone service. Mining and industry is everywhere you look. It's isolated, expensive, and quite unusual. But it is completely unspoiled, uncrowded and beautiful. 64% of the island is national park with tropical rainforest, picture postcard beaches, cliffs overlooking the ocean, waterfalls, incredible red, blue and giant robber crabs everywhere you look. The snorkeling is arguably the best in the world and the adventure this place has to offer is like nothing else we have ever experienced. This place is a hidden paradise and should absolutely be on your bucket list. G'day guys, apologies for the interruption. I'll make this really quick because I want to get you back to this episode. This one's a banger if I don't say so myself. As you know, uh, in the lead up to the new year, I'm giving away some products every week. This week, to mark the release of my coffee products that are live on the website right now, I'm giving away a box of my Rip and Drip coffee and uh, a large jar of my instant coffee. You know what, I'll probably choose a couple of you. So all you gotta do is look out for the code word in the top corner up here somewhere, somewhere through this episode. Make sure you drop that code word in the comment section of this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'm gonna pick a couple of you guys to win this good stuff. Anyway, let's get back to this one. Cheers, guys. Oh, it's actually the second day now. We're all set up. I'm gonna show you this house. So this is the diver's villa. There's a whole heap of separate bedrooms and you can hire them out separately like an Airbnb style thing, but we've hired the entire house because there were so many of us. These are the hire cars that we've got. I gotta show you them later. They're so bunky. They're little four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive RAV4s. All the steering's loose in them, the brakes are crap. <laughs> it's pretty wild. There's wild um, chickens absolutely everywhere on the island. Look, they're running over because obviously they've been fed. But how's the view? Look at that. Right, I'll take you in and show you the layout. Right, oh. So, little lounge room, dining area, kitchen, I'll take you through in a sec. Mum and Dad's room, I think they're up. I think they're actually taking Chloe for a walk. So you get another little lounge area, big king size bed. Every single room's got um, air conditioning. Massive kitchen, all the cooking stuff. Coffee gear, thank God. I didn't know if we'd have, be able to have good coffee over here because you can't get fresh milk or anything. So I was a little concerned about that. So I brought all my new um, rip and drip dripper coffee bags. Instant, I even brought a kilo of um, ground uh, espresso tenango beans because I didn't know what the go was gonna be. Tip for me and the kids are down this end. Chloe is absolutely wrapped with her room. She reckons it's like a princess room. So she's got king size bed as well. brody has got the, the dingiest room, the economy room, unfortunately. And this is me and Mama Bear. So I think the plan is today, we're gonna have some brekkie, you're gonna have some coffee. We're gonna go to the visitor center and check that out and have a little bit of a chat with the people there about what's good to do and where to start. I've had a look at the forecast and it's like just a consistent, you know, 26, 27 degree day, clear uh, the whole time we're here. And that seems to be really consistent this time of the year. We are here in um, October. We're probably at the end of the sort of uh, dry season. I think it's gonna start raining in the next sort of six to eight weeks and then it doesn't stop for some time. What happens when it starts raining, millions and millions and millions of crabs that live up in the rainforest and they're sort of like land dwelling crabs. And when it rains, it, it signals them or triggers them to come back down from the rainforest and make like a migration to the ocean where they lay their eggs and then the cycle sort of continues. All those little crabs, like millions and millions of them, these tiny little red crabs, just absolutely carpet the roads and the floor and everything. As well as those little red crabs, they've got these massive um, robber crabs or coconut crabs, but they are like the size of basketballs. They're massive, they're like the biggest land crabs. I think they can get up to like a one meter span, absolutely huge. So we're gonna go walking through the jungle, through the rainforest, and we're gonna try find some of these things. I'm desperate to show the kids what they look like. We don't have anything like that on mainland Australia, so it's 
It's pretty exciting. Here's Chloe. She's been for a walk with Grandma, I think. Hey, Chloe. Hi. We just saw dolphins down there. Did ya? Yeah. That's where you get if you sleep in. <laughs> I know. We I'll... saw dolphins, a wood crab. Did you? And what else do we see? Oh, oh look, there's a red crab just down there, Chloe. Can you see it? It's in the ground there. Look oh, at those chickens. I see. Come on, let's have a look. Have you seen any of those big robber crabs yet? No, but I've seen a baby chicken. Yeah, there's lots of baby chickens. Look, that's. I don't know if you. Ah, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. But it actually was a red crab. Yeah. <laughs> you might have seen it just a little bit. Chicky chickies? Can I give yeah. them something? Yeah, go on. There's a coconut tree. And a banana tree. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. Cool. That's the one that we saw. Yeah. Woohoo! Hey guys, you know the good thing about what, like crabs? Mm hmm. When you want to see a crab, they can't move that quickly. Yeah. Yeah, banana trees there, Chloe. Oh, they just look a little bit funnier. Yeah, until they ripen, they look a bit funny, don't they? Right though, let's find your mum and go have some breakfast though. Yeah. Oh, we're on the hunt for um, robber crab, aren't we, Tibby? Yeah, I don't think you get them here though. You reckon? From what I read, it was Dolly Beach that has Nana. the robber crabs. All right. Nana! Nana! Nana. Look at the, um, are these fig trees? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mum will know. Mum and dad are hippy dippy types, which is why they wanted to come here because they're really into vegetation and plants and all that kind of stuff. Let's go, Chloe. Lead the way. Ficus. There you go. I knew she'd correct us. Ficus. And a warning about something. Yeah, we weren't sure if there's a road. It's definitely not a road. So we parked in the right spot, Chloe. The grotto. Slippery descent. Surging tidal sump. Rock falls. Proceed with caution. Okay. Yep. Can I hold it? Yep. I reckon this might be it right here, Clark. Yeah, I hear the waterfall. But I can't really hear it. That was the grotto, that was wicked. Amazing. Yeah, I'd seen pictures and videos and stuff of it, um, and it probably even exceeded those yeah. like, high expectations. Eh? Anyway, we're gonna crack on. A um, couple hundred meters up the road's golf course. It's supposed to be a good spot to see booby birds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's busy here. Did you just say it's busy? There's like four people playing Actually, golf. Actually, it's been so super quiet here in all the places, hasn't it? Yeah. I don't think Chris. I mean, I don't think it's a huge tourist hotspot, Christmas Island. It just, it just can't be because there's not enough accommodation. There's not enough food. But I tell you what, it's bloody beautiful. It should be. It should yeah. be. It should be on your to-do list. It's amazing. Absolutely. Um, it is expensive to get here though. Every, only, everything's expensive. Today. Yeah, I was going to mention there's only Virgin that flies here and they fly here twice a week. Um, but they go through Cocos Keeling as well. So you've got a, if you want to come direct from Perth, you've, there's only one flight a week. Yeah. And it was expensive. I think it was about a thousand dollars each return. And to be straight with you, like the, it's, it's an unusual place because the buildings and stuff are a little bit, it's quite run down. It's almost like you are in Indonesia, but with, um, Aussies, Aussie money, Aussie road rules. No, no. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, it's not like any place I've ever been before. It's not Indonesia, it's not Australia, it's something in between. You can you, drink the tap water. To me, it feels like the Big Island in Hawaii. If you've ever been to Big Island in Hawaii, yeah. it, it's got that feel all over. Anyway, it's super cool. I'm it's, loving it. It's beautiful. I love it too. You Babe, love show it too. Show them, let's get out of the car and show them these mountains. Wrong spot, and we've interrupted someone's <laughs> golf game. The lovely ladies on the golf course came over to help us. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, we turned we turned up at the golf course, not the golf course lookout. So we got a, the other end of the island, and um, and then we've turned out of the golf course and taken the wrong direction, and they're all standing on the top of the green yelling out, Stop! "Other way!" Stop! Go your way. <laughs> anyway, we get there. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I this is what your mum had in mind. No, nah, my mate's full driving. <laughs> This is not quite the track I expected. <laughs> it's quite fun. It says this is a main road, but this is a detour. It's I don't know. Oh, okay. It, that sign did say... Look, there's no expectations with this hire car. Believe you can take them absolutely anywhere on the island. And most of the beaches are a full drive track to get to, but I think it's like quite hard limestone. Um, there's no extra insurance you have to pay for the cars or anything like that. It's just a flat fee. I think it was 150 bucks a day and you get a full drive RAV4. And they're all pretty bunky, yeah. aren't they? And this is why yeah. they're bunky. The whole island is littered with RAV4s. They're everywhere. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the whole exhaust is hanging off over. <laughs> oh. It's no car park. <laughs> no, you just got to get out and walk. Where, though? Oh, oh look, here. there's a headstone down there. there. Where's... I want... Ah. There. Am I parked on the walking track? Probably. Yeah. How far is the walk? Do we remember? No. I didn't mark this one down. It couldn't be far. We're right on the edge of this mountain. I think your mum's got the map. Nana! Yeah, Nana. you ready? We'll go for a walk? No. Nana! 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 Nana. Well done, Dada. <laughs> I was like, what in the tree? No, I do fine for you, don't I? I don't know. Oh, Jeff. Have a look at this. Did you even notice the spider, Clay? He is huge. Where? Look, right there. Look, you walk, you walk straight under the yeah, you're lucky. spider web just there. Gotta be careful, this stuff too. It's got razor um, sharp, like serrated edges on it. And it, Tiff, uh, years ago, was walking through stuff like this and it ripped her ear. Poor bugger. Heaps of headstones through here. It's an old Chinese cemetery. I think Chloe's found a lookout behind us now. But yeah, this, these are scattered all the way through the jungle on the way out of here. Tiff's having a hard time with Brody. He's a nightmare to try carry on these walks. Nothing like Chloe. Chloe, you'd stick on your shoulders and you could punch out a 6K walk or something easy in a day. Can't do that with Brody, unfortunately. Tried um, carriers on our chest and our back and stuff, but he just, just wants to walk, wants to throw rocks, wants to do boy stuff. How's a look out, Chloe? Look Hi. good? Yeah. Careful. Sharp rocks, buddy. Wow, Chloe. Check this out. Woohoo! Woo How good is this? <laughs> so, just to give you a little bit of perspective of the island and where we are, this is our house up here at Flying Fish Cove. This sort of seems to be like the main hub of the island. It's where the airport is um, and the shops and all of that stuff. And then we're going to drive all the way over here to Hugh Dale's waterfall and Anderson's Dale. So pretty much the other side of the island. It'll take about 40 minutes and I think it's about 60 k's. Okay? Hmm. I think so. Yeah. Definitely worth hiring a car when you're here though because absolutely most things seem to be a drive and there's no taxi services on the island. Oh, there might be one. There's one taxi. One individual man. Yeah. Oh, and there's no phone service. So if you want to call a taxi from somewhere, yeah. Good luck to you, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you can, on that note, they recommend, the visitor center recommend that you get a PLB, a personal locating beacon, like an EPIRB style thing, from the police station before you go to any walks or anything. Because if you were to have an accident, break a leg, have a heart attack or whatever. Or your car breaks down. Car breaks down, no reception. Who do you call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> Wow. 
She's a beauty. Where are we on? Dale's, Hugh Dale's waterfall. Yeah. Blue, we're, blue crabs. Is this the one where they reckon you get the best chances in the robber crabs too? No, this is the blue crabs. Oh. What we've done, on the island, there's like, I don't know, let's say half a dozen good long walks that we want to do. We've worked out how long they are, and then we're just sort of like, for us, we're prioritizing with kids. We know, we kind of maxed out at probably like a 3K walk, which luckily, I don't think, I think this might be the longest one at 3.6. Nah, I think the hardest is 3K, Rich. Oh, this one's 3.6 oh, yeah, today. But it, most of it's easy. There are a few really hard ones we're not going to do at all, but from what I've heard, they're not the best to do anyway. Yeah, so. they're very in difficulty. Some of them are super duper steep and slippery and all that. Anyway, yeah. we're going out to Dales. There's supposed to be a waterfall and um, a nice beach too, eh? Yeah. Oh, every time this car starts, I think. It might be the last time. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh wow! What? That's an ancient old um, locomotive train. We're going to go back and check that out later after we get to the Dales. Did you realise it was right on the road? No, neither did I. The funniest thing is that everywhere you drive around this island, there is heaps and heaps and heaps of chickens, right? I mean, like millions of wild chickens just running in and out of the jungle over the road and stuff and yet when we we're in the shops yesterday we found packs of eggs for thirty dollars well that's what your dad said i don't, I don't know whether they were thirty dollars we'll have to go back and have a look yeah i reckon that's the funniest thing because yeah the, it, it would be so easy to collect eggs here yeah. <laughs> most of the stuff at the supermarket didn't have a price on it so it was hard to know exactly what you were paying yeah proper deep thick dark jungle now so that's the walk we're gonna do all right let's see how long the pram lasts tibby cool place so cool eh? yeah. Nana. Nana. Oh, look at you <laughs> guys robber crab i wish you could hold crabs but they wouldn't move away The chuck has disappeared. Yeah. Step on that. Or nearly. She just spotted a tiny blue crab on the right and she nearly stepped on a giant robber crab. Ooh. Oh my goodness, guys. Chloe, you nearly stepped on it. You nearly stepped on that, Chloe. That was crazy. We would have gotten a bit crazy. Giant robber crab. Also, oh, straight ahead is the other one. All right, so you got to walk back a bit. Yeah. Please. They're crossing the stream. Oh yeah. Oh, all the blue crabs. Yeah. 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 Uh, Those heaps. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can just go past the big ones. Yeah, yeah. he's right underneath yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> See him down there too. Oh, yeah. big, big blue one. Just reading these blue crabs. They they um in the dry season they stick to areas where there's some water running. So the Dales here on Christmas Island is one of their hot spots. And there is thousands of them all up through this sort of wetlandy kind of area. Close love and she's running ahead with Nana and Poppy and all you can hear is another one, another one. It's good, isn't it? You want me to get oh, the pram? Yeah, lucky your bug sprayed up. Well. You gonna hold this and I'll carry the pram? Nana. Yep, come on. Oh, see, I've seen photos of people standing under it, but you're not allowed to anymore. I think that would injure your death. <laughs> Thirsty work, Nana. Okay. You done? Are you gonna? Shoot down from here, and there's one more out to Anderson. Is it Anderson Beach, Tiff? The Dale. The Dale. Anderson's Dale. Anderson's Dale. It's like another K or so off this track. We'll have a quick look at that, and then I think that'll be us walked out this morning. Some of the birds you can see in the area. Ah, the Christmas Island thrush. That'll happen in the tropics. Oh, I see one that you guys haven't seen. Nothing yet. funny about thrush. <laughs> 
Hey, Chloe, there's a baby one nice and close to the path. Good spot, and Mama. Their antenna's huge. Yeah, they're so um, well camouflaged. Yeah, they? they are. Look, Chloe. Yeah, I saw. Oh, cool. <laughs> Boring. A couple of robbers down here, Crabby. and lots of blue ones. <laughs> are we getting a bit crabby schmabby now? Crabby We've seen enough. Schmab. Oh, Chloe's asking about eating them now. <laughs> the love affair's over. Oh, look at all the crabs on your feet. Hello. Here you go. Look at all the holes. Oh my god, they're all coming out. I know. This is cool. Here you go. So we deviated a little bit. We're kind of walking through the jungle. Apparently, if you follow the stream, somehow, we can end up at the ocean, so we're gonna give that a go, but Chloe, that's all the crabs everywhere you walk. You gotta be careful of your step. Look at them all, Chloe. I know. Careful, guys. Just mm -hmm. take your time. This has been a bit hectic, this walk, <laughs> with babies. Oh, it's just the crabs. And the crabs, yeah. All right, I'm gonna have to put the camera down because I need my hand, but I'll show you at the bottom when we get there. Oh. We gotta get down that. Dodging crabs and helping kids. Come on, we'll do it. It's an adventure. Camera's going down for a bit. Well done, Chloe. That was a really hard one. <laughs> yeah. Yay, well done. Well oh, done, Mama. It's not so much the rocks, it's the crabs. I know, everywhere you go, they stick, to, they oh, go right goodness. under your feet. Look at this tip. Amazing. I'm not too keen on wading through that murky water to get, to get any further. I'm happy with that. It's wild out there anyway, Brody. That was a hard one. Hey. Yeah, it was. Hey, Do you reckon it's worth it, too? Yeah, beautiful. Pram friendly? No. <laughs> you got a mozzie on your face. You got to you gotta battle crabs, mosquitoes, really sharp rocks. And um, yeah, quite big steps and, and loose ground and all that kind of stuff. It was a difficult one. Yeah, but is that purple? It's re honestly, yeah, it's, it's really purple. just the crabs. Like they're so unnerving, like with their little people. They're quite aggressive too. Yeah. Wherever you're about to put your foot down, they scurry underneath you like they're gonna bite you. I'm surprised none of us have been bit yet. Yeah. yeah well, we haven't got well, out of here. Oh, I wanted to tell them that I nearly got bitten by one when we were doing the other walk. You nearly got bitten by the big robber crab. Yeah, the big robber. Oh, yeah, you did. It yeah. was blue. Daddy, yeah. Big robber. What do you reckon, Boo? Daddy. Good. <laughs> oh, we had a bit of a rest after that big walk this morning. Um, and we're going to go out for tea tonight. Dad cooked last night. Tonight we're going out to a place called the Golden Bosom. There's a tavern in um, the little area oh, that we're staying in. So we'll have a feed there. I'll show you a bit of footage of that place. Everyone's getting dressed and sorted for a couple of walks we're gonna go do today. I'm gonna to make a coffee to take with us on the road. Uh, and I wanted to tell, tell you about how I'm doing coffee on this trip. I'm super excited about this. Some of you will know that I've been working for a while uh, with Espresso Tenango, who's a specialty coffee roaster over in New South Wales, whose coffee I've been drinking since uh, 2020, so a while now, on sort of uh, collaborating on some coffee with me. So we've come up with, we're doing Ripper Drivers drip coffee, uh, I'd love this. I think it's such a good idea. Um, I'll show you how that works. We're all, we've also, 
This is a, a sample jar at the moment. Both of these things are on the web store now by the time you're watching this video. But that's a sample jar of a small batch, um, freeze dried, instant coffee that we're doing as well. But I wanted to show you these Ripper Dripper bags. So this is small batch, incredibly fresh, specialty, organic Ethiopian coffee. It is phenomenally good. It is amazingly good. All you need is access to hot water and you can have a fantastic coffee no matter where you are. Whether you're uh, overseas on a holiday in Airbnb accommodation like we are, whether you're camping, full driving, whatever, you can boil your water on the billy, you can heat it up in a microwave in a hotel room, whatever, you can have fantastic coffee no matter where you are. So the slower that you pour it, the longer that you let it steep, the stronger your brew is gonna be. There's all sorts of different things you can do with these bags I found out too. If you don't rip it open, you can just drop that entire bag into a cup of boiling water and you can let it steep that way for longer if you like. Once you're done, you can squeeze that last bit of goodness out if you like, bury this thing in your garden, empty the grounds over your plants, whatever you want to do, that's totally compostable. I like a splash of milk, but there's nothing to stop you from drinking it black if you're that way inclined. Whoops, making a mess there. And that is a really good, solid cup of coffee. It's really good, give it a crack. Yeah. We're back in the Bunky Rav and we're doing a full drive track. <laughs> <laughs> Out to um, Dolly Beach, which is supposed to be a bit of a hectic walk, so we'll see how we oh, go. It's classed as moderate, it's just one of the more difficult ones on the island. Hectic if you're carrying a pram. Ah! Bastard splashed me. Sussed out if mum and dad want to do it before we keep going because I'll need someone to pull me out. <laughs> mum and dad didn't want to do it, so I'm going to drop Tiff and the kids off and I'm going to run back and get mum and dad. Must have a real bad feral cat problem here, eh? Yeah. Everywhere. I, wonder if, I hope they check up on them. All those cats will be sitting there for ages. Yeah. Anyway, so if we didn't drive that, that would end up a, a 6K walk or a 4K walk, sorry, would have ended up being about a 10K walk. So dodgy track, but worth doing. The tiff's already ahead, we'll catch up with it. But we'll grab some of these bags, eh? Because I think this is where the um, all the rubbish washes up from Indonesia, right? You want one? Yeah. yeah. We're doing our best to start all these walks as early as we can, just to, to beat the heat and the humidity of the day. So this one, nine o'clock, we've managed to get onto it, which is good. This beach and a couple of other beaches on the island seem to collect all the crap, all the rubbish, the thongs, the old um, floats and uh, plastic bottles and stuff from Indonesia. It all washes up on the beach and sort of collects here. So it's good that they've got those bags there so we can collect a bit and take some out with us. Everyone chips away at it. You can get on top of it, you know. Cool! -wee! <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, you still got lots of energy left. You guys are doing well. Mm. Chicka chick. Can I? Go. Hey, we saw owls. Did ya? Yeah. That's cool. Well, we didn't see owls. We just heard owls. Oh yeah. What noise? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's the biggest one we've seen, eh? He's saying, bugger off! Leave me be! Fair enough. Cool, hey? Can we go that way? Yeah, oh yeah, Tiff, check out all the crabs here. Oh, Chloe, look, this is how the coconuts grow. That's, that coconut washes up on the beach like that, mm -hmm. and then the plant sprouts out of it. Wow, that's so cool. That's I a love the plant. Yeah, it's cool. That's a palm tree, and then it grows massive and makes its own coconuts. Oh. Here, grab the camera and show them the um, crabs down there. Ooh. Oh, I nearly got gotcha. you. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Oh, 
Show us what you got, little hermit crab. Yeah. So apparently those big rubber crabs with no shells start off as tiny little hermit crabs with shells and as they get bigger and older they um, develop like a hard exterior and then they get rid of their shells and they're sweet without them and they can grow up to 60 years of age. There's one just here actually, I'll show you. And although they're called coconut crabs, coconuts don't really make up a big part of their diet. They're um, omnivores and uh, they're opportunistic carry-on eaters so they'll eat dead fish and dead animals and stuff like that but they also eat a lot of um, just vegetation. So this is the life cycle here. These tiny little hermit crabs grow up to be this big fella here. So many um, beautiful little rock pools are swimming here too. Chloe's found a couple of absolute crackers. Bye -bye. See the sea snake in the water? See it? Yeah. Sea snake or it might even be a small eel just coming around that rock. Hey Daddy. I think he's a small eel. Did that hurt you? No, nah, uh, if it is a sea snake, they can be really poisonous, but their mouths are so small they can't bite you. But I reckon he might be a small eel. No, we're not there yet, Chloe. We're just gonna stop and get a um, a lighter so we yeah, can light the stove at home. My wallet's here? Yeah. Oh, cool, because I was just gonna check the glove box. <laughs> <laughs> um, the pram or no? Uh, nah, we're only gonna be quick. We're just stopping to go in a grocery store to get a couple of things. I thought I'd show you what a grocery store in Christmas Island looks like. It's not your typical grocery oh, yeah. store. Nah. Daddy, you've got Brody. Yeah, so that's, there's a couple of shops in Christmas Island and they're all kind of like that. The pricing is similar to, I reckon it's like buying stuff from a servo. Imagine doing your grocery shopping from a service station. They're the kind of prices you're paying. So it is expensive. And that's why we've brought over quite a lot of food and why everyone does. And um, that's what mum and dad are doing right now at home actually. They're cooking us a, um, a sort of lamb curry. So that'll be nice when we get with back. With the lamb they brought over on the plane. Yeah, with lamb they brought over. Because, yeah, meat here is like $100 a kilo or something. Anyway, we're heading out now to have a look at an old train. There used to be a rail network the whole way through here. And um, this is an old uh, engine that's been dumped in the bush and been taken over by, by the jungle. It looks pretty cool. There's also the Crab Bridge um, to have a look at as well. Just a little quick thing before dinner.
Have a look, Chloe. I'll be over there in a sec. I just want to show you these guys the crab bridge. By the way, if you're wondering, because it's like real thick jungle and us and the kids have been climbing through it without a worry in the world, that's because there's only three um, snake species found on this island. Two of them are blind snakes. One of them's endemic to this island. It's originally from Christmas Island. Um, and the other is a wolf, uh, oriental wolf snake. But yeah, they're all non-venomous, so um, there's no worries walking through the, the bush here. Not from More of a concern about getting bitten by a crab. Anyway, on that note, so these are crab barriers. So when the big red crab migration's going on, the rains start and all the crabs are coming out of the jungle, they're making their way down in the ocean down this way. And so they don't get squashed on the roads, some of these roads have to stay open for industry like this one. So rather than closing the road, they try to divert the crabs. So that's why they're using these barriers and um, they perforated this bridge so that crabs can climb onto it and over it to get over the road. So pretty crazy operation to protect the crabs, it's awesome. But you might have noticed as well these drums on the side of the road, some sort of vinyl -y canvas material, they stretch that out as well to make these barriers. Other than going over the road, they also go underneath the road on uh, what look a lot like cattle grates. Lots of those spread all over the, all over the island on some of these roads. And um, yeah, crabs can, can pass through underneath the road so we don't run over them. Anyway, check out this train. This thing is wicked. So cool, there's a tree actually growing through the thing. Amazing. We're in the dry season now on Christmas Island, so in the wet, when this thing's, when the jungle is going crazy growing, this thing must look amazing. <laughs> Flat battery. Oh, and they're locked in the car because the mozzies are terrible. You realise this is the one time we've ever driven somewhere without mum and dad? The one time. I know I'm lucky man, but I don't feel lucky man. Why can't I feel what I know? Get my ass on camera. I'm not. <laughs> Although that might help with views. Yeah. What do you think of the jungle chick? Do you like it? What do you think of the jungle? <laughs> you are the worst. Yeah. Would you like to come back when the red crabs are running? Yeah, she keeps doing this thing where I put the camera on and she just doesn't yeah. talk. She thinks it's funny. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I'm like, are you serious? Oh, okay. Still ain't got what I wanted, man. Same cause, same suffering. I know I read what I saw.